How can I use signaling inhibitors and or activators to understand signaling pathways in cells? I'm Julian, product scientist at Cell Signaling Technology, and this is CST Tech Tips. Characterizing the activity of signaling pathways is a common research objective in the study of cancer or other diseases. Today, we'll focus on modulation of signaling pathways using activators and inhibitors with Western blot as a readout. Many of the experimental design principles can be applied beyond Western blot as well. As an example, consider the EGF receptor tyrosine kinase, EGFR, which autophosphorylates and activates itself after EGF ligand binding and can activate multiple downstream pathways. To investigate which specific sites on your target are phosphorylated, select a phospho-specific antibody validated for Western blot. This blot shows an antibody that detects EGFR only when phosphorylated at tyrosine 1173. Input samples were cell lysates from either control cells, cells activated with EGF, or EGF activated cells pretreated with gefitinib, an inhibitor of EGFR kinase. The absence of a band in the last lane suggests that EGFR phosphorylation at tyrosine 1173 was inhibited, but further controls are required. For Western blots using phospho-specific antibodies, use stripping buffer to remove antibodies from the membrane and then reprobe it with an antibody that recognizes total protein. This important control is used to confirm protein degradation or changes in expression are not occurring and supports the interpretation of the phospho-EGFR blot. During validation of phospho-specific antibodies at CST, we also compare untreated lysates to lysates treated with phosphatase. You may decide to include a phosphatase control to reconfirm antibody phospho-specificity for your experimental model. For all other samples, adding phosphatase and protease inhibitors to the lysis buffer is recommended to avoid loss of target phosphorylation and total protein level during sample handling. Activated surface receptors may turn on one or more pathways, depending on biological context. By selecting antibodies for intracellular signaling proteins, such as AKT, you can investigate which pathways are responding. Reading the literature and checking pathway diagrams from cellsignal.com pathways can give you an idea of the logical relationships between proteins in a pathway and help you generate hypotheses for your experiment. Once you've identified the pathway or pathway branch you want to investigate, you can select targets. One approach is to treat your sample with an inhibitor that targets an upstream node and read out with one or more antibodies specific for downstream targets in different branches or pathways. For example, phosphorylation of the EML4-ALK fusion oncoprotein is reduced by the kinase inhibitor crisotinib. By running parallel western blot experiments, using both phospho and total antibodies for ERK and AKT, we can observe reduced phosphorylation of these proteins as a result of EML4-ALK inhibition. The interpretation is that activation of ERK and AKT signaling pathways are dependent on EML4-ALK activation in this model. These are just some of the approaches you can use as a starting point for designing your experiments. When selecting targets and antibodies, this is also the time to think about what controls you'll need to properly interpret your data. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, share it with a colleague, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel for more tech tips. For advice on choosing a blocking protein for your phospho western blot, check out our Milk vs. BSA tech tips video. To find protocols and information for CST antibodies, search by name or product number on CellSignal.com. If you have further questions, get in touch with a CST scientist at CellSignal.com support. We'll see you next time. Good luck with your experiments.